Hi everyone, it's Liam here from A Shot of Wildlife and today we've come to Watermill Broad Nature Reserve. And why have we come here, Steve? We're coming to find grass snakes. The largest land reptile in the UK. Let's go and see what we do. Watermill Broad Nature Reserve is in southwest Norfolk, a few miles north of Cranwich. There used to be a quarry at the site, but now all of the excavations are full of water leaving a patchwork landscape of wet grassland, deciduous scrub and several large ponds and lakes. This makes for the perfect habitat for one of our lesser known reptiles, the barred grass snake. A close friend of mine, Stephen Elaine, is doing his PhD research on the grass snakes at the site and as such carries out regular surveys for them. He has laid out corrugated refuges around the site and today we're going to search underneath 33 of them and see if we can't catch some serpents. I filmed him looking underneath the first 15, but typically it wasn't until the 24th that Steve caught the first snake. This is a young female. This can be determined by counting the scales from the vent to the tip of the tail. She is probably one of last year's hatchlings and Steve will now weigh and measure her. He then gently encourages her to lay flat on her back against a white background so he can take a picture of the scale patterns on her underside. These are quite unique and can be used as a way to identify the snake into the future. One other thing that Steve looks for is skin lesions. Luckily she has none and within three minutes of being captured she is ready to be re-released back underneath the refuge from where she came. This first snake weighed 15 grams and measured only 35 centimeters in length. This is small for a grass snake but she did give us something big. She gave us a renewed sense of excitement and on we went to the next refuge. Unfortunately it was five or six refuges before we caught our next snake and as expected I failed to capture this on film as well. This second snake was slightly larger than the first at 41 centimeters long and weighing 25 grams. It was a male and when turned over had a much darker scale pattern than the first. Surprisingly, grass snakes are very often misidentified as adders, which have an undeserved bad reputation. But in reality, they look completely different from one another. If you see a snake in the UK that has a yellow and black collar, as seen here, then it is almost definitely a completely harmless grass snake. Usually the snakes go back under the refuges when released, but this one had other ideas. We decided that rather than catch him again and force him to go back under the refuge, it would be kinder to let him go on his way. He probably knows this area like the back of his scales and will surely get to where he feels safe. We marched on to the next refuge and by the time we reached it, I decided I wasn't missing any more opportunities and I was going to film the searching of every refuge from here on out. I'm glad that I did. Here you can see how Steve springs to life with his ninja like reactions and longer than average arms to catch the snake before it can sliver away. So underneath the 32nd refugia, we found this little grass snake, and by little, I mean it's tiny. This one's a hatching from this year, and he only weighs five grams. Now, because he's the fifth snake that Steve's caught in succession, he has to be swabbed for snake fungal disease. He hasn't got any legions, lesions, but he has to be swabbed anyway. Let's see how he gets on. Although this wasn't our fifth snake of the day, it was the fifth in Steve's running total, so he used a sterile cotton bud to rub up and down the length of the snake's body. This would then be sent off for testing 
to see if the snake has snake fungal disease. This is highly infectious and can cause skin lesions and in some cases death. The disease has been recorded at this site in the past and to protect the snakes we used new sterile gloves for each snake and disinfected our equipment at the end of the survey. This snake weighed only 5 grams and was just 21 centimetres long. Okay, so now because he's been done, um, he's been processed completely, swabbed and measured and weighed, it's ready to go back underneath the refuge to where he was found. Let's go. And he's gone. We moved on to the next and final refuge of the survey. It must have been our lucky day as Steve snatched another snake. So underneath the last refugia we found this small male. Now this guy is actually getting ready to shed his skin and you can tell this because he's got cloudy eyes. As snakes grow they shed their skin. This causes their eyes to go cloudy and also makes the rest of their scales look washed out and faded. Okay, so this guy's done as well now, which means it's time for him to go back underneath his refugium. Let's see. Oh, right there. After my failed attempt at filming and releasing a snake at the same time, we walked back to the car. On the way, we passed by one of the refugias not in this survey, but had a quick look underneath it. Sure enough, there was another snake, but as the survey was complete, we left him be. In between this last snake and the car, we saw a few reasons why the snakes might be doing quite well at Watermill Broad. This is a young common toad, probably from this year, and measuring only 2 to 3 centimetres, he would make an easy meal for a small grass snake. We also spotted several larger common frogs. These would be too big for the snakes we saw today, but would be the perfect prey for an adult, fully grown snake. Okay, so we've now come back to Steve's house and when Steve moved in, he realised that there was a disused swimming pool, as you can see behind us. Oh, there. <laughs> it's all green and dirty. So, Steve had a closer look and he realised there were some newts in this swimming pool, but they're not normal newts. These newts are pedomorphs. Steve, what does that mean? So basically, these newts are eternal juveniles. They retain their gills and, uh, yeah, they can breed in this state and they're basically Peter Pan newts. Okay, cool. Let's take a look at some that we just caught out. Newts usually have a similar life cycle to frogs and toads. The adults spend most of the year on land, but return to the water to lay their eggs. These eggs develop as aquatic larvae with external gills. By the end of the summer, they absorb these gills and set out for their own life on land. These pedomorphs have not done that, despite some of them being the size of fully grown adults. If you look closely, you can see their gills above their front legs. We aren't sure why this has happened, but it is definitely something to do with the pool environment. One of these pedomorphs was kept in a tank for a few weeks and has since absorbed its gills and grown into a proper adult. Unfortunately that's all we've got time for. I hope you've enjoyed today's video and if you have be sure to like, share, subscribe and all that great stuff. And if you're interested in the work that Steve's doing I'll leave a link to his website down below. Um, thanks for showing me around today Steve. You're it's welcome. been a been a great time and thank you guys for watching. See you next time.